With action and suspense out of the Old West comes the most famous hero of them all, Hopalong Cassidy, starring William Boyd. The Ring of the Silver Spurs heralds the most amazing man ever to ride the prairies of the early West. Hopalong Cassidy, the same Hoppy you cheer in motion pictures, and the same California you've laughed at a million times. Raw courage and quick shooting have built a legend around this famous hero. Hopalong is a name to be feared, respected, and admired, for this great cowboy rides the trails of adventure and excitement. William Boyd as Hopalong Cassidy, and Andy Clyde as California. Well, Hoppy, what about our story? We call this one Stagecoach West. California and I were riding through the bleakest country I've ever seen. Flat tableland edged by bare rolling hills. Up ahead, maybe half a mile, vultures circled in the sky, adding a sinister touch to the scene. California and I were still above the tableland, threading our way out of the hills. And the sight of the carrion had been holding our eyes for the last 30 minutes. There's a lot of them, Hoppy. Must be after something big. Hey, I smell smoke and dead embers. Hmm, might be that chain station. It's got to be around here somewhere. We ought to know in a minute or two as soon as we get around that ledge. Buzzards and burned embers. When they go together, it ain't good. And I'm a think... Son of a gun. Well, there's your chain station. What's left of it? Yeah, and like I said, it ain't good. Burn to the ground. Still smoking. That smoke's the only thing that's keeping them buzzards in the air. Come on, California. Let's get down there and have a look. Whoa, boy, hold it. Nothing much left. Not unless you want to count the rims to them wagon wheels. You even got the horses in the barn. No sign of any human remains, though. But see, this pile of embers must be the house, wouldn't it? What's that at your feet there? Nothing that I... Uh-oh. What is it? I guess it's all that's left of your relay station keeper. Jim Newton. You know something, Hoppy? I've seen this kind of work before, and it always means just one thing. Engines on the warpath. Now, back to Hopalong Cassidy and our story, Stagecoach West. Hoppy and California have come upon the smoldering remains of what had once been a chain station for stagecoach horses. In the midst of the embers lies the charred body of Jim Newton, the station keeper. It's California's idea that the destruction and murder is the work of Indians on the warpath. I can't believe you're right. This area did have to be Apaches, and there's been nothing to arouse them. Oh, how do we know? Kilito's too intelligent a chief. I know him. I know the way he thinks. Ain't you forgetting that nephew of his, Savallo? Now, there's an Indian that likes nothing better than going the warpath. And he could always pick up a bunch of followers from the other side of the border. No, Kalito has too much control. Sure you really believe that, Hoppy, or uh, do you just want to believe it? Come on. we better ride into the settlement. They got to know that the stagecoach no longer has a chain station at this particular spot. This place is going to be getting too big for its britches. Uh, somebody putting up a building? Maybe it's George Bartram. Are you talking about more room for his store? Hiya, Cassidy. Oh, Dan. Uh, is this saloon still operating, Dan? <laughs> sure is, and there's plenty of sad thriller for Hoppy in case he wants it. <laughs> that sounds like a good idea. Get some of this trail dust out of my teeth. Uh, before you do anything, Hoppy, there's something you ought to know. What's that, Dan? Clay Pearson's in town. That's interesting. Uh, it's more than that. It's, uh, it's don't important. Don't go getting all uh, riled up, California. We got other things to think about. Better think about Pearson, Hoppy. He hates you worse than poison. And he's chain lightning with a coat. Yeah, I don't even take time to draw. Shoots through the bottom of his holster. I saw him kill Jerry Fane in Santa Fe. 
train was nothing slow. <laughs> Thank you, boys, for the vote of confidence. Now, uh, listen, Hoppy. That you uh, were... flag over Bartram's store, Dan, that's at half mast. Yeah, that's for the law we used to have near town up to yesterday afternoon. Clark Tuttle, deputy sheriff. What happened to him? Got into an argument with Clay Pearson over a hand of cards. That's a fine situation. Hasn't anyone hey, done wait, it? Hey, wait, wait. Here comes the stage. Stagecoach coming in. Here, might be bringing it. Uh, look, look. Something wrong with it. Well, it sure is. That's Hunt Clifford's body dangling off that barn. Oh, oh, oh. What went wrong, Johnny? What happened to Hunt? Give me a hand with his body, will you, boy? Yeah. Johnny? Oh, it sure is. I've got another one back in the coast. Road agents, Johnny? No, it weren't road agents. It was a lot worse. We run into them just this side of Brighton Fort. Ran into where? Apache. On what? the war path. Johnny, Johnny, better step into the saloon here. You oh, need a drink. With that news, I'd say we all need a drink. Well, Toledo had no cause to start a war. We ain't done nothing to him. I can't believe Toledo did start it. Well... We was a little ahead of schedule, and they had to come up behind us. But the one that shot Hunt Clifford was a riding bareback and wearing an Apache headband. Ah, uh, sure. Looks as though we're in for a passel of trouble. Now, how about you, Cassidy? See any signs of them on your way in here? Well, yes. I'm afraid we did. Newton's relay station was burned out. There you are. How about old Jim? Dead. Burned to a crisp. Johnny, uh, didn't I see an army man get out of your coach? Yeah, that's right. Colonel Stanley. He's going through to the post to take command of the troops there. I wish we had him here. Well, we got the colonel anyway. Not for long, gentlemen. I'm continuing through to the post as rapidly as that coach will take me. I don't know about that, colonel. Just got word that our next relay station's been wiped out. Be hard going to get through to Larkin Station with one change of horses. We'll leave that decision up to the driver. How about it, sir? Don't worry, Colonel. I'm going through all right. I got to go through. No, oh, don't be low cold idiot, Johnny. Why do you have to go through? Well, now, for one thing, I'm carrying medicine. Something important for Doc Cole at Elby. I'd sure like to get another gun guard to take Hunt Clifford's place. How about you, Dan? <laughs> don't look at me, Johnny. Not with engines out hunting hay. Huh? <laughs> <laughs> uh, me neither, Johnny. I fight him, but I want to fight him right here. <laughs> Chick wants a keg of whiskey behind him for comfort. <laughs> well, All right, guard for you, Johnny. You will, Hoppy? Hoppy, you're plumb crazy. You're a man, sir. Will that settle it, driver? That settles it, Colonel. How soon will we pull out? Well, sir, our schedule says three hours from now, but that's going to be changed. Let's say in about 45 minutes. Sure, I'll go along if I can ride in the coat. California must have seen that pretty gal is riding. Hey, I plumb forgot about that gal. Maybe I ought to go along after all. You bet that's why Hoppy decided to take the trip, too. Huh? <laughs> Gentlemen, that young woman happens to be my daughter. If I hear any further mention of her name in this room, I shall take it as a personal affront. Good day to you, gentlemen. Them soldiers sure think they're high and mighty. Good thing for him I ain't wearing hardware. I'd have called him on that. Yeah, good thing you didn't, Chick. He'd have had that sword out and you'd been skewered while you was thinking about it. <laughs> What's your uh, passenger list, Johnny? Well, there's a colonel and his daughter and a hardware drummer from Denver and a sailor going from ocean to ocean the hard way. You're also going to have a physician from New York City, if you don't mind. I'm Dr. Shaw. I came in on the last stage and stayed over because of a temporary indisposition of the digestive system. I don't know anything about firearms... But it's possible that you may need medical help. Oh, you'll be more than welcome, Doc. But this trip ain't gonna be no hayride. And I came west to see the country. I won't see much of it by sojourning in this community. And so, gentlemen, I shall ride with you. Uh, wh where are you going, Hoppy? Thought you was uh, gonna have some sarsaparilla. I just thought about the horses. Figure they need a drink even more than I do. I'll be back. Oh! Oh, excuse me, ma'am. Do you always come out of doorways backwards? I'm sorry if I hurt you. Oh, I'm not hurt. I've jumped out of the way of oxen before. I'll just overlook that remark, if you don't mind, ma'am. You must be the colonel's daughter. Would you mind letting me by? I was just going to introduce myself. The name is Cassidy. Oh, yes. You're the hero who's going to take us through all the redskins. I can see a man has to overlook a lot where you're concerned, young lady. But I would like to talk you out of making this trip with your father. Why? Because of the Indians? I've seen Indians before. I saw some today. As a matter of fact, I fired several shots at them. You know, 
Maybe that driver grabbed himself the wrong party for going along as a gun guard. Always taking care of things, Mincha Cassidy. Hello, Pearson. They told me you were around. Then you should have played it smart. You don't see me getting out in the sun. Not when I can stand here in the shade. Mr. Cassidy. Don't move. I like your way you are. Out in all that sunlight. And speaking of friends, there ain't nobody around here to take your part now. That tin horn deputy's dead. I heard about that. Understand he was a good friend of yours. We got along pretty well. Maybe you heard whose lady stopped. Yeah, I heard that too. But you didn't want to stick around. You thought it'd be more fun to play hero and ride that coach out of here. There's something about you that bothers me, Pearson. Might bother lots of people. I ran into you a month ago in Santa Fe. You didn't seem eager to start anything there. Oh, I felt kind of soft-hearted that day. Thought I'd let you live a little longer. That's not the story. You're baiting me into a fight for a reason. Why? Keep that stagecoach from rolling out of here? That's something you'll never know, Cassidy. Because as of now, you're... Oh! <laughs> Ah, uh, it's just a nick in the hand. Nothing I can't cure with a bandage. I wish I could say the same for Clay Pearson. You got away nicely, Johnny. Settlement's a mile behind already. Big horses make a lot of difference. Yeah, we'll need them without no relays at Newton. It gives us more speed, too, and we might need that. Get up, sir! Johnny! Yeah? You mean it when you said you were making this run because of medicine? Yeah, sure did. Some stuff from the east, uh, going for the dock. Here, take a look at it. Not much of a package, but it's mighty important. You sure this is the only reason you're going through? Well, uh... Come on now, Johnny. Well, no, Hoppy, it ain't the only reason. What else? Gold. We're carrying almost $50,000 worth. Getting it through to the railroad. What happened to that hardware salesman from Denver? Didn't see him get into the coast. He got cold feet. Thought he'd be safer standing behind. Hey! Who's that? California. He's pointing back at something. Seems to want us to pull up. On this grade, he's plumb loco. What's wrong? That settlement injured. He's right, Johnny. Settlement's being attacked. Then we got clear just in time. I wouldn't say that. Some of them are pulling away. They're pulling away and coming after us. With a woman among its passengers and a cargo of gold, the stagecoach rolls to the west, alone in a bleak country, pursued by a band of marauders wearing the headbands of the dreaded Apache. Hiya! hip Hiya! I'd say they're about two miles behind, Johnny. I'd sure like to swap that gold for a couple more riflemen. What are the chances? Depends on how fresh the horses are. If we hit the top of this grade without losing the wheel, we might have a chance. We'll know that in about another mile. There you are, Johnny, over the hump. How much you pick up on it? Maybe half a mile. That's too much. They're riding fresh snacks. There's only ten of them. How about running till we get to that cup and go for rock and then making a fight of it? It's a good idea, if we can make it. Stopping here. My congratulations, gentlemen. Thank you, Colonel. Is your daughter all right? That's quite all right, Mr. Cassidy. You got another one, Hoppy? That's fine shooting, Cassidy. They all seem to have carbines. I'm outranging them with the sharps. They certainly show no indication to come in. Renegades. 
I'll clear them out of this country when I get troops behind me. Hope I live to see you do that, Colonel. Can I be of any help? It's the shooting war, Doc. Grab a rifle. That sailor seems to be doing all right. Oh! Doc, here's your... No, it's too late. He never knew what hit him. A sailor? Oh, hey, that's too bad. Johnny! Oh. Quick, Doc! Oh, no. Not now, just when they're drawn off. Look there. That's exactly what they're doing. They're quitting. Well, I wouldn't say that, Colonel. They probably figured there ain't enough of them right here to do the job. But these planes might be full of them. I get a hunch they're just hanging back until they get a bigger band. How's Johnny, Doc? Wound in the front and one in the back. Bullet went right through. Is he going to live? If he's lucky. Those fellas are out of sight, Cassidy. We're going on, aren't we? Uh, as soon as we bury that sailor, we might as well face it. Getting through to Benton City is going to have its problems. Hey, dust cloud around that bend and coming this way. Could be more trouble, Hoppy. No, take it easy. I think it's a wagon and team. Yeah, you're right. It's a woman and a couple of kids. Pull up. We'll have a word with them. Right, Hoppy. Whoa there. Whoa. Whoa. Say, sure is well seeing you people. Looks like you might be running from something. We are from Veely. Indians been seen around there. We heard they was on the prod. So I just decided to pull out. We're heading for safer territory. You better take some other route. We left trouble like that behind us. Yeah. Nothing but bad news all around, I guess. Ah, you're welcome to come along with us if you think it'll be any protection. No, thanks, mister. A stagecoach is no protection to an Indian trouble. We'll head for the hills and take our chances. Good luck to you. Get up there, Perk! Get him! Come on, there! Get! Come on, this girl! Bad news, Cassidy? Not good, Doc. Not good at all. Oh! Oh, what's the matter, California? Oh, I've got a misery in my back that's been killing me. Uh, what did cause that, Doc? Could be a number of things. They're never too sure about the cause of backaches. Uh, do you feel you have to keep right on, Cassidy? I guess I do, Doc. Why? Well, if possible, we should take time to do something about Johnny, the driver. He died about three miles back. Wonder if that next relay station is still intact. It better be. These nags ain't good for nothing but jogging. How much further is it? A mile or so. Hmm. Feels good to be riding along in the dark. Makes your fellow feel safer somehow. Makes you feel like. Here they come again, Hoppy. Hey! Hey! How many of them, Hoppy? Can't tell. Lean over a little more while I. No! You got one. It's here, Huffy. The relay station's still here. Whoa, Anna, whoa, whoa. Swing them up to the shed. We'll have to defend our horses as well as ourselves. I'll get the doors open. Better hurry, Huffy. Come ahead. Up there. Get up there. Ah, we're in by the skin of our teeth. Well, here comes the first light of dawn. So it is. Hoppy. Yeah? I want to say I'm sorry for the way I acted back at the settlement. <laughs> I didn't mind. When a woman gets bumped like that, she's got a right to throw a few sparks. You've been carrying the responsibility of making critical decisions for us. It hasn't been easy for you. Uh, it was tougher on that sailor and Johnny the driver. They're both dead. Do we have a chance? I figure there are about ten of them left, which makes us too tough for them as long as we hold up here. Mm. They know we have to move out. No food, no water. Well, how about the cabin? California and I slipped over there right after midnight while you were asleep. Found a piece of moldy bacon. And the keepers? Dead, both of them. When do you think they'll attack again? Don't answer that, Cassidy. I'd rather just keep guessing. Better for my morale. Hello, Doc. You got any sleep? Uh, a little. California been pesting you again. 
There's a man who's never known a sick day in his life. But let him get near a doctor and he starts groaning. In the profession, they'd say he has a touch of hypochondria. A lot of people are pretty fond of that ailment. wonder where he is, by the way. California? Oh, he slipped outside again. Why, well, I thought you knew. He'll end up stopping lead. That could be him now. I'll get it. Uh, careful, Hat. Careful, Hop. Hoppy. Hoppy, come here a minute. You too, Doc. Where? Right over here. Don't worry, they've drawn off. I want you to see something important. What are we supposed to see? There's a little gully, and there's one of them down in it. Must have stopped one of our bullets last night. Gully? But, oh, I see. It's an Indian. It looks like an Indian, all right. War paint and all. But this is the first time I've ever seen an Apache with blonde hair. I'd call that fellow a pug-nosed renegade white. Yes, it is. You're right. He is a white. I wouldn't get down there, Doc. We might have to break for the barn any second. All right, Cassidy. They're white. But why? Ever hear of Ventral's raiders? Yes, but still... Killers, rustlers, bandits. If they wanted to go on a reign of terror, what would be the best way to pull out of it without bringing the whole country down on them? I see it, Cassidy. Put the blame on the Apaches. I felt all along that Chief Toledo wouldn't be guilty of a thing like this. Colonel, what about those troops of yours? How will they act in this? Major McKittrick isn't a man to hang back and do nothing. If I'm not at the post by tomorrow afternoon, he'll move out. And his plan of action? Probably a direct attack against the Apache Reservation. That's what I've been afraid of. So we have to get through to keep an innocent tribe from being wiped out. We'll try directly for the post. The animals are still tired. They'll need all day for rest. I think you need rest too, Cassidy. Well, that might be a good idea. Would you take over guard duty at dusk, Doc? Right. The rest of us will get some sleep then. We'll make a run for it at midnight tonight. California, wake up. <coughs> what? Huh? What's the matter? Trouble coming. Get hold of your handgun. Huh? Yeah, yeah. All right, all Listen. right. Just an owl. A human owl. Giving those coyotes a signal to come after us. Human coyotes. That's the doc calling them in. Why, Hoppy, what do you mean? He's guarding the door, ain't he? Yeah, he's guarding the door. Hey, the colonel's awake, too. Awake and ready. Get your eye on the doors. Those renegades are coming through any minute. What? How are they going to get in? The doc's going to let them in. I still can't believe it, Cassidy. Oh, you can't be right. I know I'm right. How about Sally, Colonel? Is she out of the line of fire? I persuaded her with some difficulty to go back into one of the stalls. Oh, Pee, what's this all about? Shh. Listen. Here they come. Let them get all the way in here. Looking for something, men? Just four of them, Hoppy. Just four of them. That's all that get away. And the doc wasn't one of them. The doc's dead. That's good news. It means we'll get through to Elby. Four of them will never attack us. How's the shoulder, Colonel? Well, it's going to growl at me for a few days. But when I think of how completely we took those renegades by surprise, well, I'll be able to grin at it. <laughs> and to think that uh, Doc was part of that gang. Uh, you really believe he was Ventral himself, Hoppy? I'd say there was no doubt of it. Ventral's reputation makes him out to be well-spoken and educated, but not educated enough to be a doctor. You ready to leave, Sally? I'm ready, Hoppy. Now, let's get the colonel into the coach. <laughs> man, oh, man. <laughs> the way they walked into that trap. It was their only chance to survive. We had to trap them some way. How did you know, Hoppy? What made you think that man wasn't really a doctor? Ever notice how doctors talk when they speak of medicine? They might know the answer to something, or they might not. But in mentioning it, they always use the word we. But Bentrell, every time he mentioned the medical profession, he used the term they. 
It was just a hunch. Oh, and it saved our lives. All right, California, let's go. Get up there. Hey! Come on, let's go. Hey! Get up there. Goodbye for now from Hopalong in California. And here's a special invitation to join them next time they ride out from the Bar 20 when, as usual, I have a hunch they'll get into plenty of action that spells trouble. <laughs> <laughs>